I got one of these. So over the next few weeks, I'll be building a guitar based on the Prusa caster. It's gonna be a little bit challenging, but I've got something cool to help me out. The uh, Prusa Core 1 printer, uh, 3D printer by Joseph Prusa, it says. So it's, uh, that should be quite helpful, having this new fantastic printer to do it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, take it out of the box right now and see, what, see what's inside. Suppose it's ready to go, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Of course, my Ender 3 Neo has been a good printer, especially with, um, with Octoprint and everything else, but you know, it's time to upgrade to something a little bit, a little bit better. Um, the Prusa printer, the Core 1, is a bit bigger at, I think, uh, 270 by 250 by, well, I'm not sure the dimensions, 220, I think. Whereas this, I believe, is 220 by 220 by something else. So this one, the Prusa Core 1, will be a little bit bigger and um, a little faster, I think. Now, of course, this printer is, is generally more expensive, so that's something to think about. But, um, yeah, sometimes, Sometimes you pay the money, you get something better. So we'll see, see what happens. Hmm. Look at that, got some uh, gold baron. So I guess, uh, yeah, gummy bears. <laughs> Looks like they've melted in the hot Florida sun, but that's all right, that was nice, nice touch, nice of them to include that for, for us. So now it's just like a gelatinous blob of, of, of sugar. It's a nice thought, but Florida's, Florida's quite hot, so it didn't quite survive. That's okay though, hopefully the printer did. Let's see, this looks like the bed, steel core on PEI, so that's, that's the bed it prints on, I think. Okay, that looks nice. I'll set that aside for now. 3 printing handbook. Okay, that's good. Anti-vibration feet. Good. Power cord, need that. Let's see. SD card or thumb drive. Okay, all good stuff. And some filament, nice, and then pull it out. So, ah, yes, like this. Hmm, it's kind of cool. So flip that over, flip that over. Ah, very nicely done. Although I think I'm gonna have to put this on the floor to get that out. Ah. Ah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool they did it that way. Slightly bigger than I thought it would be, but that, that's okay. I'm going to put it on my my uh, shelf over there. Probably replace the Ender 3, which is a little bit sad, but that's okay. Hmm, don't know what this is. Looks like it came off here somewhere, so I have to remember that, where that is. So I think I'll put this up like this, and it'll look a little bit... Kind of a cool, uh, cool surprise there. Another... Uh, Yep, so that's the inside. So yeah, that looks, uh, looks nice. I have to put the leveling feet on, I think. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's a nice printer. I mean, you know, it's a, um, not a cheap printer, but it's, it's a nice one. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like it's supposed to go somewhere, so. Yeah, I'll have to consult the manual a little bit. Um, see how to do all this. I don't want to mess it up first thing. So the manual says to install the anti-vibration bars. Uh, I guess you're supposed to leave it on the side and install the anti-vibration bars. However, it came with anti-vibration feet, so I assume you just put those there instead. Probably I should look this up, but you know, I'm trying to simulate Simulate an actual, you know, normal people being excited about this and just kind of doing what they need to. So, you know, I'm, I'm just doing it for science, right? Maybe. Yeah, looks good. All right, so that looks good. Turn it over and it shouldn't, shouldn't vibrate as much. All right, let's tip this over. 
Gotta watch your fingers. And uh, all right, there we go. So I'm supposed to so I'm supposed to install display, and I'm not sure where it is. However, there's this box here that, well, I don't know what's in it. So I'm not sure how to get it open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it. And got a bunch of stuff in here. Ah, here we go. X LCD. So this is probably it. Now, it would have been nice if they told you how to get this off, but I guess, I don't know. I guess we're probably just gonna rip it anyway, so. There we go. All right, good. So that's, uh, yes, that, I guess that's some sort of filament holder. That's nice. And here's the LCD display. So it's, it's in there if you're wondering. All right, so. Yeah, looks pretty good. Still don't quite know where this goes, but I guess I'll figure that out. So I'm supposed to lift, lift the bezel at the right side, huh? That's interesting. All right, so uh, that is, does, is held firmly in place by some magnets. So, okay, so I got that. Hmm. Ah, you gotta kind of loop it over, just like it says in the instructions. And there we go, I think. Yeah, looking good, I think. All right, and then plug the silver, oil, silver thing into the terminal. There we go. All right, so everything's good there. Looks like they provide their own Allen keys, but I've got my own, so this you know, I like this this thing. Had it for quite a while. All right, so put that in there. There, there. Screw it down or bolt it down. I guess it's not really a screw. What well, is a screw? Hex screw. The magnet design is pretty cool. All right, let's see. So left side first, and the right side. It says. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a little hook, right side. Look at that, looking good. It says carefully slide it down. I don't know that I was as careful as, as it should be. So I did that off camera, plugged it in. I mean, if you've used the monitor before, you could probably do that. Plugged it into the power, turn that on. All right, so that, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the power button, power switch. We'll see what happens. Yep, starts booting up. Up, oh, original Prusa. And doing some stuff. And probably should take this stuff off there. There was some paper on the other side, so take this paper off too, I think. I'm not sure it said this, but i to get that paper off somehow. All right. All right, yeah, so get the paper off, I think. We'll see. Also, probably need to put a uh, bed on bed plate on there before I print anything, but it looks, uh, yeah, looks like it's about to be set up. So I gotta, gotta figure out my language, which would be English. I don't know, a uh, whole lot of other languages, a little, little Espanol from Spanish high school and listen to podcasts too about it, which is kind of nice. Oh, English. Hi, this is your Prusa Core 1 printer. I would like to guide, guide you through the pro setup process. All right, so yeah, so Joseph Prusa guides you through the process apparently, so that's good. He's winking at me, which, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I trust that. Well, I was trying to figure out where the wired ethernet jack is and it actually is uh, right in here. Kind of hard to kind of hard to see behind the uh, power cable or whatever, but I'll plug something in there and hopefully I can hook that up without any problem. So there we go, runs there to my little switch back here. So I've got my laser, my other printer, and my octoprint set up on here. Or I guess octoprint setup goes to the other printer, goes to the laser, goes to that printer. And I don't know why I have four cables on there, but it's doing something else too. I don't know what. 
Ah, the fourth cable actually goes to the home network, obviously. I'll clean that up later, but for now I gotta at least get it off the floor so I don't trip on it. So, all that being said, no Wi-Fi for now. Let's see. No, it is it's touch screen, that's pretty cool. There we go. Look at that, looking beautiful. So we'll run the calibration, yes. Ah, print sheet installed in the print bed. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Looks like this is reversible, so that's kind of cool. So I was thinking maybe there was a protective surface on this, but I don't see any, any way to get it off. And I was also thinking these uh, things on the end align with this, but they don't seem to, but they seem to kind of stop it. So uh, I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and go, go with it for now. Maybe. Okay, it looks like those, those uh, studs, they align with this, so not with these. These are, I don't know what those are for. But you put that in there and it captures it nicely so yeah hopefully that's how you're supposed to do it hopefully there's not a secret uh, protective layer that you have to take off because I didn't see anything but we'll go ahead and press OK all tests passed successfully so that's good I guess so it's making me a little nervous because it's just kind of banging up on the door but According to this, it says uh, things may be, printer may vibrate and be noisier during homing. So I guess it's okay. It came with some prusament, but um, I don't want to open it up right now. So I'm going to use this uh, zero filament that I had running. So hopefully it can handle it. So it says when I push this in, it'll the loading process will start automatically, so we'll see what happens. Oh, look at that loading filament. It's uh, doing its thing, so that's kind of cool. I don't know why it keeps beating its head against the wall, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. So. Let's see, it wants me to select PLA or anything else, so we'll go ahead and select PLA. Loading it, purging. Should, a little bit should come out there of the nozzle. There we go, PLA coming out. So I loaded up uh, some zero blue marble filament, I believe, because I didn't want to don't want to open up the good, uh, good prusament that came with it, get it all humid and such, but looking pretty good. So is this color correct? Uh, yes, I think so. Retracting the filament, it says. So I think we're, I think we're in business, mostly. So this is kind of cool. It says when printing with PLA or PETG, you can open this, open this up. Oh, open this up. Yeah, okay, open, open this, uh, this vent up so it can maintain the right temperature. So that's kind of cool. So I'll open that up for right now. Also, pull this off. There we go. Ah, yeah, it looks a lot better without that, so. Uh-oh. That's not good. Hmm. I guess those are supposed to stay in there. I may have pulled something off, I don't know. All right, something to think about. But maybe, maybe I'll see them pop up somewhere. Maybe I could put some more. So I plugged in this SD card, or sorry, I plugged in this uh, USB stick, and supposedly I could, I guess I can just print this, so. All right, so it's gonna do its thing. I'm sure the top ventilation grill is open for proper, proper airflow, so I've done that, and it's beating itself against the wall. I guess it's supposed to do that. And I didn't really wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. There's probably some fingerprints on there because I uh, was trying to get the uh, supposed protective sheet off there if there was one, and I don't think there is. Hopefully there's not, otherwise there might be a problem. Oh, it looks, looks pretty though.
So after a bit of initial heating and such, it's uh, making a pretty good clip of this. I'm used to a 0 0.6 no millimeter nozzle, but I believe this is 0.4. So, um, you know, it might be a little diff different than I'm used to, but that yeah, looks, looks pretty good so far. Making a good clip at it. Heated up to 230, I believe, which isn't, I think usually I run this a little bit lower on my Ender 3, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Well, still working at it, actually making pretty pretty fast work out of it. Plus out of a filament that, you know, pretty much was unknown to it. And I think that's pretty, pretty impressive. Well, there it goes. I'm not sure exactly how long that took, but I was pretty much working on my other printer, getting it kind of set up, getting a place for this and it's done. That's awesome. Let's see, so a little bit off and So, yeah, looks really good. Wow, it's amazing what a good printer will do for you. Wow, that was that was awesome. I mean, it did take a little while longer than, you know, five minutes or whatever they said to, to set it up. I don't know, but anyway, I'm quite impressed with it. And yeah, I could probably do it in not much time now. So, very cool. Right.